What's up everybody and welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. Today we're on the home stretch of finishing up the valve cover job on Project Sport Runner here, the supercharged 4Runner. We're going to get started by prepping the painted valve covers with the tube seals and the PCB grommet. And if you're not caught up, I will link to the top the first two parts of this series so you can catch up. And I've left one spark plug tube seal out so I can show you guys how to put it in. But basically you set them in here as flush as you can. Make sure these tabs are bent out of the way. You can see that one's still bent up. You want them this orientation. The flat side goes towards the underside of the valve cover and the little grommet part sticks up. So pay attention to that. And then it's just a 32 millimeter socket set on there. Get a few taps with your hammer and you want it to seat flush with the edge of the valve cover little place right there. I don't know what you call that recess. That's what I'll call it. So you want them flush with the recess for the tube seal. Now I'm going to show you how to put one in. So that's the flat side. You can see how the tube seal sort of recesses down. You want that flat side in the recess. So you just set it in there as straight as you can get it and then use your socket and your hammer. And I think this would be pretty hard to mess up, honestly. Because it's only going to go in there one way. And I believe that's got it. And then I'm going to use a punch. You want to be careful, don't damage the seal to push down that tab. that's all there is to it. So the valve covers are all prepped and ready to go back in the truck. And man, that wrinkle finish turned out great. Got the uh, PCB grommet in the passenger side. It's a little tight, so if you put a little um, lubricant around the outer perimeter of it there, it'll pop in. Just make sure it seats flush. You'll be good to go there. So now we just gotta do the rest of the prep work and these will be ready to go on the truck. So I've got two things I sorta need to focus on. The uh, half moons, they get some of that FIPG on them and the cam plugs also. I figure I'm going to do one side at a time. So I'll do the cam plug and the half moons front and rear and then install the valve cover because after you get the cam plug and half moons installed, you're supposed to put a little bit more FIPG in the corners of the cam here in the front and the back and on top of where the seam is on the half moon and I would rather get the valve cover installed right after that stuff is is put in place so that everything sort of as it cures it sort of cures with the valve cover gasket and everything where it's going to live forever so the passenger side looks like it's a little bit easier you got a little bit more working room um, working by myself it's going to be a little tricky to get underneath the uh, wiring harnesses driver's side is going to be even more of a challenge because of this big thing. But taping this up has saved me. It's uh, keeping it from breaking into a gazillion pieces. So if I can maybe do like a zip, a bungee cord or something to pull these fuel lines and everything back out of the way, give me some room, we can get it done. I'm gonna start with the cam plugs and you'll notice it says to put some of that FIPG on these little edges right here and right here. So looking at the cam plug, that's here and here. This groove looks like an oil passage or something to me, so I'm gonna not get any FIPG in that area. Uh, we're gonna put just a dollop on here. And remember, your plug goes in with the flat side facing out and the concave side facing towards the motor. There is the cam plug installed. I made sure to seat it against this cap. So I got a little bit of space in the back and now I'm just gonna put the uh, FIPG on here. And just set the cap in place. It just drops right in and thread your bolts down by hand. It's aluminum, remember. We'll snug them up by hand and then we'll torque them to 12 foot pounds. That's the spec on these. And I don't know if it mattered. These uh, caps look like they were exactly the same driver and passenger side, but 
I made sure to pay attention and put them back right where they came off. So passenger side went back on passenger side, driver's side went back on driver's side. And here's what the service manual says about putting FIPG on the little half moons. There's a groove and it says to put it in that groove. I'm gonna put a little bit extra. Um, I just feel like it'll, it's not gonna hurt anything. It'll maybe seal it up, and make it last a little bit longer. But that's what the service manual says as far as FIPG goes. So there's how I did mine. And it looked to me like one side of this half moon is thicker, the lip on it, than the other. And I looked at the factory ones and they were the same way and they had the thicker side pointing into the engine, so I'm gonna put mine in the same way. Next up, I'm gonna put the valve cover gasket into the valve cover. And there's a, uh, I'll show you this actually. There's a thin side and a flat side. The thin side obviously goes into the valve cover itself and it will hold it in place while you reinstall it. Make sure you push it down so that it's uniform. It'll make it easier, I think, on install. And triple check these curved areas. Okay, I have put in the FIPG on top of the half moons. You can see it there, as well as around those cam humps, front and back. We're ready to install that valve cover. And I lubed up the spark plug tube seals a little bit of motor oil the service manual says to use multi-purpose grease but i figure motor oil work just as well and maybe not make as much of a mess And I went ahead and prepared the washers for the valve cover bolts. I'll just put them on the bolt, make it easier to install. And you want to start them by hand. I keep saying it's aluminum, but it's a thing so that you don't cross thread anything. The torque spec on these, I think I mentioned is 53 inch pounds and they are a 10 millimeter bolt, but you don't want to just start on one and get it to 53 inch pounds. I'm probably going to make three passes and the manual doesn't really give you a pattern but you want this to seat level or as level as you can get it. So I'm gonna kind of do, you know, a cross pattern. So here, 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 and then crisscross on the ends. And I'll probably make three passes before I get to 53 inch pounds. Obviously you wanna make sure there's nothing caught, no wires caught underneath the valve cover. And I did use a little inspection mirror to make sure everything looks like it was seated good and everything's good to go on this side. Passenger side is pretty well wrapped up. I reconnected the two electrical plugs up here, reconnected my fuel injectors, uh, put this big wiring harness back on the bracket that it was mounted to. And I, even though this little plastic um, wire loom thing is broken, I did put the 10 millimeter bolts, um, the factory bolts back in the valve cover just because this was broken before I ever you know, took it apart. I guess the vibration from the engine just rattled it enough to break the little tabs. No big deal. Uh, those 10 millimeter bolts do have some little um, spacers on them, collars, that sort of hold this plastic back off of the valve cover. So I did put those back in place too. And now we just got to perform the exact same thing on the driver's side.
got the driver's side done. <clears throat> Wasn't terribly, terribly bad. Getting this thing out of the way, a second set of hands will help you there. I did bungee the fuel lines back so I had some extra room. And to get to that very bottom back bolt, one of these will make your life a lot easier. It's a wobbly. You could probably do it other ways, but I would recommend you get a set of these. There's a link in the description for tools that I use, and I believe these are in there. I think the brand is Gear Wrench, maybe. But they work really, really well for tight spaces like that. I've got all the bolts torqued to 53 inch pounds. Remember, it's inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. And I went around twice. Um, I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> when I started taking this apart, I didn't really find much leaking other than these top bolts being super loose. I could loosen them by hand, and I think that's where 90% or 95% of my leak was coming from. So that's what you're probably gonna run into. So I made double sure they were torqued correctly. Now's a good time to go ahead and put your um, spark plug wires back in and your coils. Hopefully you made a diagram so you remembered where they went, but on the uh, passenger side, it's 531. Driver's side is 315. You can see my notes over here where I was kind of keeping track of some uh, torque specs. Next up, oh, and also make sure to reconnect if you disconnected, I'm sure you did, any wiring harnesses. I went ahead and connected it back underneath the uh, alternator and on the two brackets underneath the uh, driver's side manifold there. Uh, next up is the supercharger, I think. All right, very carefully take the old gasket off. Hopefully you had it taped up. And then I wipe down the sealy mating surface with acetone to clean up any you know any kind of residue or anything before I put my new new gasket down. There's what you can see what it looks like before we put the supercharger on. And once you find the studs, set the supercharger on. And then you want to start the little uh, bolt that holds the there's a bracket and a spacer. You're going to do it first to hold the supercharger up. Next, I'm going to start working on the supercharger bolts. And I noticed when I took them out, they were getting a little bit of galling on them. So I put some NICs. Uh, original installation, I didn't do that, but I'm going to now. And these get torqued to 13 foot pounds. So that was pretty easy. These two aren't bad. I got those two started as well. Uh, these are all 12 millimeter. That stud right here, got to him like that. The stud in the back, I don't want to take a chance on dropping this bolt. So I'm going to use this. It goes to my uh, impact driver, and this is a magnetic 12 millimeter nut holder. So we're going to hope for the best on this deal. And I believe it worked. I had to get a little bit creative uh, because of the clearance. The clearance around that the supercharger housing is real tight. So only quarter inch drive sockets would fit and I had to use a wobbly to get in here. Uh, did that here, here, and in the back, and uh, an extension. So that's how I got that done. And you want to tighten the center ones first. So I did this one, 13 foot-pounds, this one, 13 foot-pounds, then I did the back stud, 13 foot-pounds, the front stud, 13 foot-pounds, and finally the middle one. Since I was using a quarter-inch drive, um, I felt like my 3 8 drive um, torque wrench was too big to get in here, so I used an inch-pound torque wrench and just used 156 inch-pounds, which was the same thing as 13 foot-pounds. And here's the extension and a little wobbly I used. I had a little 12 millimeter socket on the end of that. That's how I reached them. I caught a mistake I made. I wanted to mention it to you guys so you don't do the same thing. I had this fuel line pulled back when I put this bracket on and the fuel line has to go on the supercharger first. I don't know how I missed that. And then your spark plug wire actually routes over top of it for um, back driver side, and it has a connector on it for the wire. And then the bracket goes on and your throttle cable goes on the inside of the bracket too. There's a little place for it. 
So don't make the same mistake I did. And with that fixed, we're ready to put the supercharger belt back on. Just release the tensioner. Make sure the belt goes around the alternator. That's good to go. Even though I've got water meth injection, I also have the Underdog Racing 7th injector. Um, I had it before I had the meth, so I just left it on here. So I've reconnected the fuel line and the fuel injector. So that's good to go. And now we're down to the throttle body. And of all the gaskets I bought, <laughs> I forgot to get a new throttle body gasket. Um, I'm going to hope this one's okay, but if I have any problems, I'll just buy another one and replace it. But I recommend that you plan for this and have a new throttle body gasket. This one's the opened up one, obviously the O. Um, that's the popular one because of the uh, airflow for the supercharger. Not only that, but a lot of people with a naturally aspirated 3.4 liter go to this as well. spec on the throttle body bolts is 13 foot pounds but again I'm going to use inch pounds so it'll be 156 just like the supercharger and I'm going to do them in a cross pattern and it's a 12 millimeter bolt and a six hex on the top Well, all that's left is the airbox. Well, here's the finished product. And the red looks better than I actually thought it would. I was a little worried it would be too much red, but honestly, so much of it is hidden by coil packs and supercharger and hoses that it's just enough. It's almost like an accent. So I'm super happy with that. I think it sort of fits the theme of the vehicle. Let me know what you think. Let me some comments below. Tell me what you think about those red valve covers, yay or nay. So all that's left to do is fire it up, do a test fire up. I let it dry. I've been letting the um, FIPG dry for a couple of hours. I just want to be super duper sure it's cured. <laughs> and the uh, manual says that it takes about, about an hour. So it's been a couple of hours at least. So I'm going to do a test fire up. Hopefully it starts. Well, here we go. Fingers crossed. Okay, we got lucky and it started up. No, I'm kidding, I figured it would. I was super careful. So here's the final tips I'm gonna give you. Um, take your time. I think breaking this up over two days was a good decision. It gave me, uh, painting the valve covers gave me time to really focus on cleaning the heads super, super good. I also did an inspection of the heads, vacuumed them even to make sure any little particles of the FIPG or pieces of the plastic um, wiring shrouds that, sh that broke a little bit, any of the pieces that fell into the heads, I picked out with needle nose pliers, and then I even vacuumed everything really, really good, like twice, just to be super sure. All in all, for technical difficulty on a scale of one to 10, I'm still gonna say this is about a three and a half to a four. Um, it's, it's just tedious, to be honest. There's, it's time consuming. So I think I mentioned before, the Toyota book time on this is three hours. The mechanics must be just rushing through this to do it in three hours. The way those shops work, they get paid, the mechanic gets paid for the three hour book time. If they take longer than that, they're not really making any money. Their goal is to be less than that. So I'm suspecting they must either have A, a chemical that just wipes off FIPG in one swipe, 
or B, they're not getting it as clean as I did because I probably spent an hour just cleaning everything up. Um, I would say about two hours to get the valve covers off doing it by yourself, um, hour to clean things up, and probably two hours to put them back on. I did have Miss Speedy come out and give me a hand with the uh, driver's side. She pulled the wiring loom back, which made it super quick and easy. Took, took me like a minute to put it on with her doing that. If I'd had to do that by myself, it might have been a little bit more tricky. But other than that, a pretty easy job. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage as well as the website www.speediesgarage.net and hopefully I'll see you out there.